everyone, how are you?、Um, we're here once again, English Like a Native. My name is Anna English. Let me turn on the light. Ta da! It's been a little while, and you might hear my voice is a little bit off, and that's because I'm full of a cold. So I hope you'll forgive me.、Um, I have missed you all terribly, but I've got lots to share with you. And today we are doing another slang lesson. Yes, we're covering slang words beginning with the letter S. Now, slang is important when learning English because it's basically how natives speak. So if you're communicating with a native, Then you are going to find these words helpful, whether you use them or whether you just hear them and need to understand them. It's good for you to know. Now, I have found recently that looking at slang words, it tends to be words that talk about embarrassing things or things of a delicate nature.、Um, so you do have to be careful when. Deciding to use slang words, they're not really for formal situations, mostly to use around your friends. So. Without further ado, hello everyone. Let's get straight into it. I can see you all saying hello in the comments. I will try and answer a few comments as I go, but I've got a lot to get through today. So, a word of warning: because we're covering S today, there's going to be a few words that are a little bit naughty. Okay, so、um, you've been warned. Here we go. S. Good start. Have you ever been given the sack? I have, <laughs> but we won't go into that right now. <laughs> okay. And、um, after this lesson, I'll be having my dinner and then hitting the sack for an early night because I sound dreadful. <laughs>、mm. Okay. The next one you might have seen is the word scarper. Now, if you scarper, you basically run away very, very quickly. So the example sentence I've given here is. The dog scarpered when the cat woke up. The dog scarpered when the cat woke up. Meow. <laughs> the dog obviously knew better not to be around when the cat is awake. Okay.、Um, oh, some of you are saying no sound, no sound.、Um, okay. Let me double check the sound going on here. So maybe you hear no. Now can you hear me? Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. Okay, there we go. Little technical hitch there. So, hopefully, you understood. You can read quite clearly what I was talking about. Scarpa to run away. The dog scarpa when the cat woke up, and sack to be fired or to go to bed. Ah,、oh, okay. Let's carry on. Hopefully, without further ado. Oh, Julia! Hello, darling. Thank you so much. Julia has just dropped a super chat, and just so you know. Because I'm trying to keep these lessons shorter, any super chats I will answer, but other comments I will only answer a couple as we go through. But thank you, Julia. You've dropped a super chat, which is a contribution to the channel, and you've put yippee, yippee, y i p p y, yippee, you're back. Thank you, yippee. I'm so happy to be back. Okay, so the next word is the word screw. So if you screw someone. Then you're cheating them, you're scamming them, or doing wrong by them, or if you have screwed something up, and then you ruin it. Okay, so I can write here: I screwed everything up, so I ruined everything. After I was screwed, cheated by the tool company, so I've been a little bit silly here and made a little pun. Because a screw is like a tool, or it's part of a tool kit. You have a screwdriver and a screw, and I've said here I was screwed by the tool company, so I was cheated by the tool company. A little play on words. 
I screwed everything up after I was screwed by the tool company. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Okie dokie. And then the next one on the list is scum or scumbag. You've probably heard this in the movies. I hear this a lot in American movies. Hey, you scumbag. We sometimes use it over here. And um, we commonly also say scum. If you call someone scum, you're saying that they are unpleasant. They're an unpleasant person. So you don't want to call someone scum or a scumbag if you can help it. My mother always said, if you have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. It's always best. Okay, so the example sentence I've given here is, my aunt has a habit of dating scumbags. My aunt has a habit of dating scumbags. Hmm. We all know one, don't we? One person who consistently dates unpleasant people. They just have a habit of dating unpleasant people. Alrighty, so we've got 84 people in so far. If you are here and you love learning English with me, then do me a favour and just click that share button and let's get everybody in. Okay, and when you've done that, give me a holler, tell me you've shared it and I'll give you a little shout out. So, while I'm waiting for you to do that, I'm going to tell you the next word, which is the word shambolic. Now, shambolic can be um, shortened to sham, or it can also be uh, referred to as shambles. Shambles. So, if something is shambolic, a shambles, or a sham, then it is a state of chaos. It's crazy, chaotic. It's not good, basically. You don't want any, anything to be shambolic. So it's a mess or it's chaotic. All right, and just so you can see it written down here. Sham, shambolic or shambles. It's a shambles. Now, if you say, it, you can say it is shambolic, but if you use the other versions, it is a sham or it is a shambles. You have to use the article a ah, there. A sham. Sham, um, it's a shambles or it is shambolic, it doesn't need an article, okay? So, a state of chaos and here I've given another silly sentence which is um, the knitting association meeting turned out to be a complete shambles due to the fact that Bar Bar Black Sheep didn't actually have any wool. Now, if any of you are confused by this very silly sentence I was in a silly mood today when I was writing these notes. If you are confused by this sentence, Bar Bar Black Sheep is a very famous nursery rhyme that children sing in the UK. Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. And so this is something we sing as children. So the Knitting Association is a, an association of people who knit. If you knit, it means that you have needles and you use wool to make scarves or cardigans or jumpers. You knit. So the Knitting Association meeting turned out to be a shambles due to the fact, due to the fact means because, due to the fact that Bar Bar Black Sheep didn't actually have any wool. So there was no wool for the Knitting Association. It was a shambles. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. Okie dokie, let's move on. Da, da, da. So the next one is the word shaft. Now if you shaft or sh uh, sh shaft, 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 is it northern? Is it southern? Which vowel do we use? So Americans would say shaft. Northerners would say shaft. I was shafted. I was shafted. I think it will probably be the long vowel R, shafted. It doesn't sound right though, does it? Shafted. <laughs> so I was born in the north and sometimes pronunciation of southern vowels sounds a little strange to me. So let's consult the Cambridge Dictionary. And if you're ever unsure about a pronunciation in English, American or British English, then you can look at online dictionaries and use the phonetic spellings. They also sometimes have um, little voice um, little voice notes so you can hear the pronunciation. But you can use the phonetic spellings to know exactly how it's supposed to be pronounced. And if you can't read phonetics, then you need to look at my recent video 
um, the International Phonetic Alphabet, which helps you to learn and understand all phonetics that are used in the British English language. <laughs> okay, so shafted. Oh, we have... Ah, the Cambridge Dictionary website is being a little bit tricky. Um, shaft, long vowel, and American is short vowel. So shafted if you're British English and shafted if you're American English. So if you are shafted, then you have been cheated. So it's another word for cheat. Um, just like screw, you've been screwed, you've been shafted, you've been cheated. And here I've put, we got shafted by our so-called friends and their stupid lychee pen idea. Now, this might take a little moment for you to understand, but do you remember pineapple pen? Do you remember this crazy thing that happened not so long ago? It became viral, pineapple pen. It became a big hit. Everybody wanted pineapple pen. Um, well, I'm being silly and suggesting that my friends had an idea about a business named Lychee Pen. But they weren't very good friends. Um, they were so-called friends because they obviously shafted me. They did something wrong by me. They cheated me. Um, and the idea was very stupid. We got shafted by our so-called friends and their stupid lychee pen idea. So I hope that makes sense. All right, let's move on to the next one. And that is, oh, naughty word, naughty word alert. Avert your eyes, avert your eyes if you are too young to look at naughty words and look away. I know you probably won't, but this is a bad word. We use it gently and any adults um, in an informal situation are okay to use this word. Don't use it in a formal situation and don't use it if you are young, if you are a child, don't use this word. Um, but shit-faced, shit-faced basically means drunk very drunk. So if you're shit-faced, you are very drunk, okay? So um, there's quite a few words actually to describe being very drunk on this list, but the example sentence I've given here is, we were sitting in the bath, fully clothed, while listening to BBC Radio 4. Totally shit-faced, of course. We were sitting in the bath, fully clothed, while listening to BBC Radio 4. <laughs> totally shit-faced, of course. Okay? So, if you are in the bath, fully clothed, listening to the radio, then you probably are very drunk, I would imagine. The next one. Ah, oh, lots of rude words. Okay, remember, these are only for informal situations. <laughs> the next word is shithole. If something is a shithole, it is a dump. It's messy. It looks horrible. Maybe the paint is coming off the walls. Maybe it smells bad. Maybe it's just got stuff everywhere. It's just a mess. Not somewhere that you want to spend much time because it's messy. And I've written here, forgive me. My desk always looks like a shithole. I'm a lost cause. So here I'm being a little bit dramatic. <gasps> forgive me. My desk always looks like a shithole. I'm a lost cause. What are we going to do? I'll never have a tidy desk. And it's true. My desk is tiny. I have this horrible little desk that I, I picked up secondhand for free. Someone just left it on the street and I was like, can I have it? <laughs> and it's a shithole. It always has stuff all over it. It's not big enough. There's no drawers. I have nowhere to put my things. I'll have to stick them over there instead. Okay, while I am um, in the middle of the rude words, I'm going to jump over and say hello to my patrons. Hi patrons, how are you? Andrea says, hi Anna, nice seeing you again. Eric, hello Anna, nice seeing you again, hello. Without further ado, let's get started. Anna, no sound, okay, yes, we got that, thank you. I wish I were a Lulia. Hmm, but in my country, no super chat is available. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, in some countries, you can't do super chat, which is a shame if you do want to contribute, but I appreciate your support. In the Ukraine, the first Sunday in October is a teacher's day holiday. Oh, well, happy holiday to any teachers, um, which will be, have we had? Yeah, it was Sunday the other day. Well, I hope all teachers were happy that day. 
And, um, oh dear, Eric is shit-faced today. <laughs> well, perhaps drink some coffee. Okay, let's move on. So, the next word, again, is a naughty word, and it's the word shitload. A shitload means a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Lots of. So, um... I'm going to come back to lost cause in a minute. Lots of you are saying a lost cause. I don't know what it means. I'll come back to that. But a shitload means a lot. So if I have shitloads of work to do, it means I've got a lot of work to do. If I have shitloads of makeup on, it means I have a lot of makeup on. Um, Yeah, if I have shitloads of money, then it means I have lots of money. Okay, so hopefully that's quite clear. And the example sentence I've given here is... Please leave the ants alone. They have a shitload of work to do. (laughs) And again, I'm being silly here because we know ants are well known for being hard workers. Ants are always working, aren't they? Carrying things back and forth, making their nests, destroying things, breaking things down, moving things. And so I've said, please leave the ants alone. They have a shitload of work to do. All right, coming back to um, the word, or the phrase rather, a lost cause. A lost cause just means it's hopeless. You can't help them or help it. It is a lost cause. They are a lost cause. So you can apply it to a person or to a situation. It's a lost cause. Stop trying to make it better. Or um, if somebody perhaps is addicted to drugs and... You've tried many times to help them, but they don't want to help themselves and they continue with their addiction. You could say that person is a lost cause. Okay, hope that helps. All right, what's the next one? Oh, it's not a rude word for you. The word is shirty, shirty. Now, shirty, this is a good word, not well. It's not a good word, but it's not a it's not a rude word. It's not a swear word. So you must get this vowel pronunciation correct. It's a wide uh vowel. Sh, shirty. We don't pronounce the letter R. We just do sh, shirty, shirty. And if you're shirty, you're bad tempered. You're feeling angry. You're being angry in your manner. You're shirty. So my example sentence here is a rhyming sentence. Listen, Bertie, don't get shirty with me. (laughs) I thought that was funny. Bertie is kind of a short way of saying Albert. Some people just shorten it to Bert. And some people like to be called Bertie. It's a male name, Bertie. So I've said, listen, Bertie, don't get shirty with me. All right. Listen, Bertie, don't get shirty. Hopefully that will help you to remember the pronunciation. Um, Lots of you asking me about my holiday. Thank you very much. My holiday was nice. I love Italy. It was amazing. It was um, buen, bellissimo. No, yes, it was bellissimo. Um, However, due to injury and illness, we had to come back about three days early, which was a shame. Um, But I had an amazing time and I plan to go back very soon. Um, All right, so the next word on the list is the word, it's a swear word again, I'm sorry, it's the word shitty. Now, if something is shitty, then it's not very nice, okay? It's not very nice at all. So, um, I've said here, Trevor's dog Tina, so Trevor's dog is called Tina, Trevor's dog Tina was in a shitty mood, she was in a bad mood, after the pooch pampering lady failed to file her claws. So a pooch is another word for a dog. And to pamper is to treat something very nice or treat someone very nice. So the pooch pampering lady is a lady who makes dogs feel amazing by grooming them and clipping their nails and giving their hair a wash and a trim and things like that. But the pooch pampering lady failed to file her claws. So poor Tina, the dog, had still rough, long claws, which Tina thought was pretty shitty. So here we've said she was in a bad mood and she thought the fact that she didn't get her nails filed was also very unpleasant. So Trevor's dog Tina was in a shitty mood 
after the pooch pampering lady failed to file her claws, which Tina thought was pretty shitty. <laughs> okay, good. Um, excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> I have a very tickly throat. I do, um, I do apologise. Nice bit of tea to soothe it might help. Okie dokie. So we are now on 134 people watching. Lovely to see you all here. Um, from now on, I will be doing live lessons twice a week um, so that I have more time to make shorter, more concise pre-recorded lessons for you, which I hope you've been enjoying while I've been away. Um, and at the moment, I'm thinking Tuesdays and Fridays are going to be my live days. I hope that suits you. And I hope that's not too shitty for you. And I hope you're not in a shitty mood with me for going live only twice a week. Because you will get still a lot of lessons. All right, let's move on. Um, and the next word we're looking at is the word shot. Shot. So um, the word shot um, can be used to mean a try or an attempt. Okay, so you have a shot at something, or you give something a shot. Or you could say, it's worth a shot. <coughs> Very dry. So, I've put here as my example sentence, I want to run for President of the United States of America. After Donald Trump succeeded, I figured it's worth a shot. Okay, so I'm saying here, I want to try to be the President of the United States of America. I mean, it's probably impossible, but after Donald Trump, who was an outsider, who people didn't expect to become a president because he wasn't a politician, but after Donald Trump succeeded, which was unlikely, but he made it, I figured, which means I decided or I worked out, it was worth giving it a try. It was worth a shot. <coughs> I do apologise. I might be coughing all the way through this now. Oh dear. Right, so the next one is something that I'm definitely not doing, and that is pulling a sickie. So this is an important one to remember, we use it all the time. So if you pull a sickie, and we do regularly say, pull a sickie, um, it means that you pretend to be ill to get out of work, or school even. So let me just put school there. Uh, so here we have been silly again. I was told you I was in a silly mood today. <clears throat> the elephant pulled a sickie and spent the whole day skiving in the monkey enclosure. Now skiving is very similar to sickie. I'll explain it later on in the list. It just means taking time off when you shouldn't be. But I've imagined here that an elephant has his job in a zoo, but instead he's pulled a sickie and decided he's not going to work today. And he's spent the whole day skiving, hanging out, in the monkey enclosure. An enclosure is an area that's enclosed, like a caged area, um, where the animals are in a zoo. <clears throat> so yes, it's like calling in sick, but when you're not sick. So you pretend to be sick because you just want to stay in bed or you want to stay at home and play computer games or something. Okay, so have you ever pulled a sickie? I'd be interested to know. Tell me in the comments box. Have you ever pulled a sickie? I have once, but it's because I had other work to do. So I had to pull a sickie with one work to go and do some other work, which was better paid and more fun. All right, so the next word is the word skint. Another word you'll hear a lot in the UK. We use it regularly, it's common slang. And to be skint is to be poor. So if you say, I am skint, you're saying, I have no money, I am poor. So you might invite me to the cinema or out for dinner and I could say, I'm really sorry, I can't come because I'm skint. Maybe next week when I get paid and then I will pay for dinner. Um, and so here the example sentence is, if you pull a sickie too often, you'll be out of a job and subsequently skint. If you pull a sickie too often, too many times, you'll be out of a job and subsequently and the consequences will be that you will have no money you'll be skint and subsequently skint okay <gasps> Syed says I intend to pull a sickie next week oh naughty Syed I hope your boss isn't watching 
<laughs> and what are you going to do, Syed? Will you get on the phone and put on a bad voice and go, I don't feel very well? Or will you get your friend to phone and say, he's not well, he can't come in? Or do you just email? I always phone myself and do the sick voice and, and cough a bit. <coughs> I can't come in. I think that's the best way to get around it. Um, okay, so the next word is a word we covered earlier and it's the word skive. Skive. So we normally use this word when we're talking about school. Sometimes it'll be used when referring to being at work. But you're skiving, basically, now I've put pretending to be ill, but it can be pretending to work, but not actually working. So it's pretending to do anything. Um, oh, hang on, pretending to be ill. Or pretending to be working. Um, to get out of school. It's hard to explain, but basically if I... <coughs> If I make an excuse and don't go to work or don't go to school, then I'm skiving. If I come to work and I spend half my time in the bathroom and I spend a lot of time making teas for people because I don't want to do any work. And if I pretend that I'm working on my computer, but actually I'm looking on Facebook or YouTube, I'm skiving. So to be skiving is to be doing anything else other than what you're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, I'll sort out that explanation on the notes for those of you who are dropping super chats because those of you who drop super chats get a copy of these notes. So I'll sort out that, that, um, explanation of skiving for you. And can I just say G Z D Z D L M? Please tell me what to say. How do I pronounce your name? Um, you're, <laughs> you're so kind. You dropped me so many super chats and I can never pronounce your name. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've said, please take care of your boyfriend. Yes, my boyfriend is, is um, in a lot of pain. He's injured from the holiday and I am doing my very best to take care of him. I've been getting up very early to make him breakfast and make his lunches for work, make his dinner when he gets home from work and uh, making sure that he's not in too much discomfort. Um, but yes, I will. And thank you so much for your super chat. Don't forget, email me and remind me to send you the notes and I'll send them to you. Thank you. Okie dokie. So the next one, oh, a little bit naughty now, a bit fruity. We have the old slap and tickle. So to have a bit of slap and tickle is to have a bit of kissing and cuddling, a little bit of grown up time. You know what I'm talking about. And the example sentence I've given here is the randy teenagers. Oh, no, hang on. The randy teens were told that there was a strict slap and tickle ban on college premises until further notice. Okay. So there's been a slap and tickle ban, naughty, naughty, at college. So they've stopped any students from having cuddles and kisses and naughtiness, intimacy, while at college or on the college grounds until further notice. So until they say otherwise, no one is allowed to kiss or cuddle or have any kind of slap and tickle. And this is a strict ban. So don't break those rules. You never know what might happen. Okie dokie, so the next one is the word slapper. Now be very careful using this word. It's not a swear word, but if anyone called me a slapper, I might take offence. Um, yeah, so it means promiscuous female. Um, I have heard males being called a slapper in a kind of fun way. Oh, you're such a slapper. Um, I've also been, um, I've, I've witnessed animals being called slappers. So, for example, I used to have a big Rottweiler dog who was beautiful. She was a lovely dog. And when you come in, she'd lie on the floor on her back and show you her belly. And she'd want you to stroke her tummy. And she'd be like, Arr! and we used to always call her a slapper. Because as soon as you walk in the door, and in fact, whoever walked in the door, she'd just lie on her back and be like, stroke me, touch me. And so we'd call her a slapper because we made out like she was a promiscuous female who just wanted anyone to give her attention. So in that respect, we were using it in fun, but if you don't know a person very well and um, you're just throwing that word around, you might offend someone, so be careful. Um, 
So here we go. I've got the example sentence is Cindy, which is a lady's name. Cindy insinuated. If you don't know this word, do look it up. It's a good word. It's quite a clever word to be using. Insinuated. It's to um, to imply, to make out, to suggest without being too direct. Insinuated. Cindy insinuated that Jessica was a bigger slapper than Trudy. So both Jessica and Trudy are female names. Okay. Notice how with names I always put capital letters. I know you probably know this, but I do see this often when I'm correcting my students' writing, missing off capital letters on names. So do use those. All right. So the next word is smart ass. Now, okay, there's a few examples of this. So you've got smart ass. There's also, as I'm reading it, I remember we've also got smart aleck, which is a slightly nicer way of saying it. A smart ass, a smart aleck, or smarty pants is what you might say to a child. If you call a child a smarty pants, you might call um, anyone a smart aleck. But if you're being a little bit more harsh, perhaps it could it could come across badly as well. Um, you'd call someone a smart ass. Um, it's not really harsh. I guess it depends on the context and how you deliver it. Um, but basically, if you call someone a smart ass, you're saying a person is irritating because they're showing off their knowledge or trying to appear clever. So if I <coughs> if I'm always trying to impress you with my knowledge. Perhaps if I'm always butting into your conversation and saying, did you know that the sun is however thousand, however many thousand miles away from the earth? Did you know that um, whatever the facts are? But if I'm always butting in and throwing facts at you, then you say, all right, you smart ass. Okay, so just someone who's trying to show off and it's not fun, it's irritating. They would be a smart ass a smart aleck, or if it's a child doing it, you'd be like, all right, smarty pants, calm down. And the example sentence I've given here is, my husband and I are collectively known as smazy. He's a smart ass and I'm a lazy ass. Together we are smazy. <laughs> so here I've been a little silly again. Smazy is a made up word. Obviously I've said it's, we are collectively known as so there's just a word that I've made up, putting together smart and lazy. I'm saying that he is a smart ass. He thinks he knows everything. And I'm a lazy ass, which is a term you use for someone who's lazy. You say they're a lazy ass. And when they're together, you call them smazy. Smazy asses. All right. I hope that you don't mind that I've been a bit silly today. It was just the mood I was in. So the next word here is the word snookered. Snookered. If you're snookered, it means you are in a bad situation. Um, I've heard this a lot. My dad used to use this a lot and I've used it occasionally. Um, and so the example sentence I've given here is the champion wine sniffer, the champion wine sniffer was snookered. He was in a bad situation. When a dozy bumblebee got wedged up his nose. <laughs> of course, if if a bee got stuck up a man's nose, and particularly a man whose job it is to is to sniff wine, then he would be in a bad way, wouldn't he? If a bee gets wedged up his nose. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And to be dozy is to be a little bit docile. It's to be a bit sleepy, not really paying attention. Um... I used to be called dozy quite a lot when I was at school. I was always quite sleepy, quite clumsy. I was always falling over things, forgetting things. And so I would generally be called dozy. Anna, stop being so dozy. Wake up. Pay attention. All right. Um, lots of you asking, what's happened to your voice? I'm ill. I'm ill. If, if you've just joined me now, I'm very poorly. Uh, um, but don't worry. I will improve, hopefully. I will improve. Of course I'll improve. I'll get better. Okay, so can you remember um, previously we had a word for very drunk? Do you remember what it was? Anyone? We've covered a lot of words. Now it was a bad word. It started with a naughty word. 
It was shit-faced. Do you remember that? Well, I have another word to mean very drunk. This one is not a swear word, and it's the word sozzled. I love this word. I love this word because it sounds like you're drunk when you say it. Sozzled. Sozzled. I'm so sorry I'm a little bit sozzled right now. I'm sozzled. Um, so yeah, I, it's one of my favourite words. Sozzled. <laughs> if you're sozzled, you are very drunk. And it's um, a, it's quite a fun word. Okay. Um, all right. The next one we have here is a fun phrase, a slang phrase that you'll hear um, used a lot in the UK, um, particularly with people who get embarrassed by using the word we or um, p. So if you need to use the bathroom, you need to use the toilet to urinate, you might say, spend a penny. I need to spend a penny. And um, I've used this, I use this quite regularly myself. Because sometimes it's a little bit embarrassing to say, I need a wee. Um, so we just say, I need to spend a penny. And people know that we need the bathroom to urinate. And the example sentence I've given here is, I need 20 pence to spend a penny. How ironic. And here I'm referring to um, in a public place, usually like in the station, um, in the train station, for example, in, in Waterloo or anywhere in London, if there is a toilet, then you normally have to pay to go and use the toilet. And in the old days, it would be a penny, which is where the phrase spend a penny comes from. But nowadays, to spend a penny, you never get into the bathroom. You have to spend 20 pennies or 30 pennies in some places. But we still use the phrase spend a penny. So I've said, it's I need 20 pence to spend a penny. How ironic. And if you don't know what the word ironic means, do look it up. I'm not going to try and explain it. It's quite a difficult one for me to explain off the top of my head. I was thinking about it earlier. But if you look it up in the dictionary, that should be a good help for you. But you should definitely know that word. Okay. So the next one. Ah, I love this word. Okay. So the word starkers. <clears throat> if you are starkers, it means you are naked, you have no clothes. Or you can sometimes use the phrase stark, bollock, naked. But to use the word bollock is like a very, very mild swear word. Very, very mild. Um, I don't mind anyone saying this one, but I would be careful where you use this phrase. Stark, bollock, naked is a little bit harsher, not, not too much. But um, the starkers is nicer than stark, bollock, naked. But both are quite funny, I think. So, um, to be naked, to be without clothes. I'm pretending I am a delivery driver. I'm delivering parcels. And my sentence is, when I delivered a parcel yesterday, a little old lady answered the door, totally starkers. <gasps> Shock horror. When I delivered a parcel yesterday, a little old lady answered the door, totally starkers. <gasps> Shock horror. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to have a quick look at what my patrons are saying. Um, Dominico, hello, Dominico. I said, hello, Anna. Today I follow you because today I'm, you're doing a lesson later and I don't work. Fantastic. I'm glad the timing has worked out well for you. And Alex, um, Eric, sorry, has said, thanks, Anna. I'll drink a lot of coffee tonight. Thanks for the good advice. Good. And I hope that you don't feel sozzled after you've had your coffee. That should sort you out. Great. Okay. We've covered a lot so far. If you need to spend a penny, don't hold it. Do go. Um, I'll still be here when you get back because we still have a few to get through. Okay. So the next one. Oh my goodness. It's another word to mean very drunk. How many have we had now? We've had shit-faced, we've had sozzled, and now is the word steaming. If you are steaming, you are very drunk. It's quite interesting that we have so many slang words to mean very drunk. Perhaps because us Brits tend to get very drunk a lot. So we need lots of words to, to cover that particular scenario. So steaming, sozzled, or shit-faced. Choose your favourite very drunk word. Mine is still sozzled. All right, so the next one is the phrase straight up. And if I say straight up, I mean honestly. 
we can use this phrase on its own. So perhaps I'm telling you a story and you're like, no, no way, really? No. And I'll be like, straight up, straight up. And I just mean, honestly, honest, honest, it's true. Honestly, straight up. Um, <coughs> or you can use it in a, in a sentence as well. The word straight on its own, if you say, I am straight, if you describe yourself as straight, you can either mean, um, m- more commonly now, if you're saying, I'm straight, you're saying, um, you're talking about your sexual orientation. You're saying, I am a heterosexual. I prefer to partner with someone of the opposite sex. So if I'm a man, I'm straight, I like women. If I'm a woman, I'm straight, I like men. Okay, but you can also say um, he's he's straight, meaning he's honest, but we, we don't use it in that way very often. Normally, if I say he's straight, I'm saying he's heterosexual. Okay, so the example sentence I've given here is using both of those examples, straight and straight up. And I've said, straight up, I'm as straight as an arrow, Steve swore. So this is narrative, um, imagining it's in a book and he's saying, straight up, I'm as straight as an arrow, Steve swore. So he swore that he was straight as an arrow. Okay, Um, some of you have to leave now. I'm so sorry that you're leaving. Um, I hope that you'll catch up with the end of the lesson later on. Um, Don't forget, I am going to be live again on Friday as well. So look out for that. But let's move on. (laughs) We are getting to the end now here, guys. So the next phrase is stuck up. If I call you stuck up, I'm basically saying that you think that you're better than you are or you think you're at least better than everybody else. So if someone is stuck up up, or they're a snob, it's another thing you can say, you're a snob or you're stuck up, you think that everyone else is lower than you, that you're better than them, you're cleverer than them, you're of a higher class. So to be stuck up is not a nice thing. It means you look down on everybody else. Um, I wouldn't like it if anyone called me stuck up. Um, And the example sentence I've given here, again, I've been a little bit silly and ironic, not ironic, um, I've made a little bit of a pun, a play on words. I put, ever since he was made manager of the glue factory, he he has become really stuck up. Ever since he was made manager of the glue factory, he's become really stuck up. Ha 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 ha. So funny, Anna. So funny. Okay, so the next one here is the word sucks. I'm sure you've heard this. It's a very American word, but we use it now in the UK a lot. So we've definitely adopted that as one of our common slang words. But if you've watched any American movies, then you've probably heard the word sucks. That sucks, man. Terrible. I'm so sorry. My awful American accent. Um, So if something sucks, it means it's unpleasant or it's bad. So if I say I suck, it means I'm saying I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad at something. Or if I say um, the situation sucks, I'm saying the situation isn't very good, it's unpleasant, it's bad. Okay, so the example sentence I've given here is, my guitar playing sucks. It must suck to be my neighbour. My b- guitar playing sucks. It must suck to be my, um, my neighbour. Okie dokie. So, just checking things out in the old chat room here. Um, Okay, make sure you keep it nice in the chat room, guys, because if things get nasty in the chat room, then you will be removed. Only nice stuff here, please. Obviously, I say naughty words, but other than that, I'm just teaching language. Other than that, we all have to be nice to each other, so only pleasantries. Thank you. All right, so let's not be sucky, let's move on and suck it up. So if you're told to suck it up, it means you have to accept a bad situation. So um, maybe if I'm crying and I'm saying, oh, I've only got 134 people watching, I thought I would get 200 people watching today (laughs) because I missed everyone, I thought everyone would want to watch, you might say, Anna, suck it up, just accept it. Stop going on about it. Suck it up. Accept it and move on. 
Okay, so here um, the example sentence I've given is she had to suck it up. Her hoover was destined for the bin and there was nothing she could do to stop it. She had to suck it up. Her hoover was destined for the bin and there was nothing she could do to stop it. Obviously, I've been um, making a pun there as well. A hoover sucks dirt off the floor and I'm saying she has to suck it up. The hoover is going to go in the bin. Um, okay, so Jimmy, Jimmy, I'm going to put you on a timeout because um, I think you're upsetting people. So you're on a timeout. And um, Syed is saying, oh no, your lesson's too long. I'm so, I can't please everyone. Some people like the long lessons. I'm just trying to teach as much as I can in such a short time. All right, we're nearly done. So just bear with me. We've got two more to go and then we're done. All right, so just bear with me. Um, so the next word is the word sunnies or shades. If it's a bright sunny day, you have to take out your sunnies and your shades. And this means your sunglasses. Okay, so if I say, where's my sunnies? I'm asking where my sunglasses are. Or, hey, do you like my new shades? I'm asking, do you like my sunglasses? And I've said to you here, stick your sunnies on and let's dance like there's no tomorrow. Stick your sunglasses on, your sunnies on, and let's dance like there's no tomorrow. One of you's asking, what is a hoover from the previous one? What's a hoover? A hoover is a vacuum. We call it a hoover more often here in the in the UK. A hoover is a vacuum to clean the carpets or the floors. Um, okay, so the next one is one of my favourites, although it does use, a, it can be a swear word, um, but basically it's the phrase, Sweet Fanny Adams. Sweet Fanny Adams or Sweet F.A., which can be taken as Sweet Fanny Adams or Sweet F. All. Naughty word, which I won't say. Um, if you have Sweet Fanny Adams, it means you have nothing. So, what's wrong? Sweet Fanny Adams. What do you have? Sweet Fanny, Ad Sweet Fanny Adams or Sweet F.A. Um, here we go. You can have a look at it. After an hour of hardcore browsing... I came out of the sweet shop with sweet Fanny Adams, with sweet Fanny Adams. So even though I'd been in the sweet shop for an hour looking, hardcore browsing, I came out with nothing. I wasn't able to buy even one sweet. Um, yeah, okay. So guys, obviously there are so many slang words, so many slang words that I could have gone on forever. But as we've already been here for nearly 50 minutes, I had to condense the list to ones that we hear quite regularly. Um, <coughs> so you might be mentioning ones in the comments box. And um, please do, if there's ones that I've missed that you think are important, please do mention them. Add them to the comments box below. And, um, you know, go down, look at the comments and um, let's get involved with each other. If you like the um, slang terms that people mention in the comments, then give them a like, um, comment on it. Let's, let's all get talking and be the community that I know that we can be. So I'm gonna sign off now, but before I leave, I'm gonna say to you, there's one thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for people to come and join me on Instagram. Every single day, I'm putting out videos to help you with your pronunciation. Very short, one-sentence videos every single day to help you speak English with a clearer accent. Now, it doesn't matter if you're learning American English or British English. Your English needs to be clearer. So, come and join me on Instagram. It's free, and it's not only me. There are plenty of other amazing English teachers on Instagram who are also doing a similar thing. And so make the most of that resource. It's right there on your phone. You can look at it when you're on the bus, when you're on the loo, spending a penny, when you are in bed, about to go to sleep. So have a quick look on Instagram, and you can pick up so much. So please go over to Instagram. The link is right at the top of my description box below. Um, it's like the second link in, I think. And the final thing I'm going to say is I have released about five very short videos in the last week, short videos, and I need your language. So if you can possibly do me a huge favor and help the people in your country by translating the title, description, or subtitles of any of those videos, it would be a massive help. And I'd be super, super grateful. All you have to do is go to any one of those lessons, click on it, open it up, click the dot, dot, dot button, which is down on the, the right-hand side. The right-hand side, I think, the way you look at it, the right-hand side, 
this side. <coughs> and then you can see translations and add it there. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to those people who dropped super chats, Julia and Gazdavzalam. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you to my patrons in the Skype room. Patrons, I'll stay on and have a quick chat with you um, after. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed. Click the notification button and I will be back online on Friday. So follow me on Instagram and on Facebook and I'll let you know exactly what time to expect me. Until next time, guys. Take care. Lots of love from London.